Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is a weekly chart going back to the beginning of 2003, which is essentially the beginning of the bull market in silver. And it's silver overlaid over the stock Priceline.com. Now, you can see that Priceline.com has returned 10,000% that is a hundred fold return over the course of the last 10 years whereas silver is up 349 percent over the same time frame uh, if you remember back when silver was up a thousand percent right here at the May Smackdown not quite a thousand about 931 percent it was called a bubble all through the press, all through the media, all through all the investment communities, they were saying that silver was a bubble. But do you hear anyone talking now about Priceline, which is up 10 times the percentage return that silver was at its peak? Do you hear anyone talking about Priceline being in a bubble? Of course not. Now, Priceline is in a bubble, and what they give, they can take away and the reason why they run paper up so high is because they can make so much money running it up and crashing it down and taking people's money but they can take the money away very very quickly when we're talking about paper they can't do it when we're talking about physical silver so this is something that they control and uh, they're going to be taking it away fairly soon Now I wanted to cover the latest update from Saddle Tramp, or, or uh, this is series is known as the grand finale behind the green door, and this is a major update. I'm going to read through this and cover this update, and the reason is because I believe that uh, this guy, he's legit. He says that he is a uh, former banker from Texas. And everything that he says indicates to me that he is what he says he is. He says he has a lot of connections inside the banking community and they often feed him information about what is coming. Now he has a unique view. He believes that the elites are planning a controlled demolition of the currencies and the markets and that they are going to roll out when the pain is great enough. They're going to roll out a new system that's going to be subtype of commodity backed um, currencies for each of the countries. So we're going to go into the details here, read this, and I'm going to comment. Behind the green door, consider where we were in September 2013. They were still talking about possibly implementing the new Basel III banking regulations in the fourth quarter of 2013. In late August chemical attack, which turned out to be a false flag in Syria, had Obama talking about taking the United States and anyone who was dumb enough to follow us again back into war in the Middle East. The government shutdown and talks of a U.S. default loomed on the horizon, and the Federal Reserve was talking seriously about ending QE to infinity. So much so, they advertised it to the financial media that it was a done deal. The table was set, the players were in place, the fat lady was warming up, then poof, within a span of two weeks, it was all pulled back. Obama, in the face of world discontent, actually did something unheard of for his administration. He decided to obey the Constitution and ceded his war power back to Congress. Regulators decided that the banks were behind on Basel III implementation, so they pushed it back to the beginning of 2014. The Fed decided the economy, which they had been advertising as being in a full and sustainable recovery, was too fragile to taper QE at this time, despite the indisputable fact that QE was showing a severe decline into a negative rate of return. Then, last but not least, the government shutdown ended uneventfully, except for the convenient fact that lawmakers gave the government the power of unlimited borrowing for four full months. So what happened? Why did they take the controlled demolition of the world economy off the table? In talking with my friend at the Dallas Federal Reserve, a few things in the thinking of the Fed have become apparent. One, the taper of QE to infinity 
is inexorably tied to Basel III, though they don't have to begin at precisely the same time. Two, the banks were not ready for Basel III or taper in the fourth quarter of 2013. Remember in my original grand finale thread where I said the world economic crash would be a controlled demolition. Well, some of the workers were still in the building when the charges were set to go off, mission abort. But make no mistake, the demolition is not off, it has merely been postponed. And the top of the pyramid at the Federal Reserve, in classic banking fashion, used the opportunity of everything being in place in September 2013 as a test run or a stress test to find the weaknesses in their plan. Where were the hot spots? Would the markets react in a predictable way or would they go off the reservation? How would the political structures of the world react to the possibility of war and the United States default? Did the major banks have enough capital and liquidity built up under the tenants of Basel III to withstand the stresses of an economic collapse and market failure? Who would survive and were they the right someones to survive? The lessons learned were invaluable for them. These are also lessons we had also better take into consideration going forward if we wish to survive. Because quietly and inevitably the Middle East is heating up again, the Fed is talking about tapering again after reloading their capital at taxpayer expense, of course. Basel III is on for implementation on January 1, 2014, and shortly thereafter the government will be entering another shutdown crisis in February of 2014. The entire scenario is playing out all over again. The question is, will they pull the trigger this time or back off again? I would argue that the dry run stress test is done, the results are in, and it's time for the controlled demolition to begin, and here's why. First, the government has given itself unlimited borrowing authority until February of 2014. They've purchased bullets and beans, hired extra security, stockpiled resources and manpower around the country, and they're currently borrowing extra money to hoard cash for the coming calamity. Second, Basel III implementation is on, and even the smaller banks have now had a full year to prepare for it, because as I argued in my original grand finale thread, the key to all of this, and one of the primary things to watch for, is the full and final implementation phase one of Basel III. Because if you must understand, Basel III was never meant to help the world economy. In fact, it will destroy the economy by finally causing the credit crisis they have been preparing for since 2008. Basel III regulations are entirely meant to prepare the banks to either survive or be eaten by bigger banks in an economic crash to end all economic crashes. They make it easier for smaller banks to be bailed in and or liquidated and they make it easier for the larger banks to feed off the smaller ones. Basel III will also make it much easier for the powers that be to steal 401ks, IRAs and pension funds. This is the sum total of these regulations, nothing more. This is the foundation they will build from when the controlled demolition is complete and it's a foundation built on the bones of the people of the world. So as of September, October 2013 begins to replay itself late in Q4 2013 and Q1 of 2014, here's what I urge you to look for and be cognizant of. Basel III is currently slated for full implementation in January 2014, so watch for any changes in that. And watch the yield on the benchmark 10-year Treasury note. 3% is your warning siren. Prepare yourself. And if that yield stays in the 3.25 to 3.5 range for a couple of consecutive days, it's go time. People ask me all the time if I'm ready to call it. If the Treasury note yield rises and stays in the 3.25 to 3.5 range for a couple of consecutive days, don't wait for me to call it. Everything I laid out in the grand finale, an economic love story, or Fifty Shades of Green is about to come to pass. So consider it called. Now, I encourage you to listen to these four videos I've put here. Basically, he's talking about a reorganization of the currencies of the world. Obviously, that's going to be an end to the petrodollar. He's talking about them going to some type of system 
where countries are put on competitive footing by having their share of the money supply uh, having to do with their export capabilities. Now, this fits in with what we've been seeing in China. He talks about China and says that although China has a lot of resources, as far as China's resources to population or their per capita resources, they're actually not very high. So he sees the United States, Canada, and uh, other countries much higher than China. Uh, so he says that some countries will will be able to use their stockpile gold to uh, promote their portion of the currency. Others will have to use natural resources and others will have to use trade. Now, there's been some debate about going back to a world gold standard and uh, if that happened, uh, let's say we went back to some type of gold basis for trade weighting where countries had to balance their uh, import-export books using gold. If that were the case, uh, I heard a recent commentary on this and the gentleman was saying that most people believe that if we went to that type of system for world trade, that the people who are going to be the wealthiest are going to the, be the people who have all the gold. And while that is true initially, that's not true moving forward because when you think about it, it's not the ability to have the gold, but the ability to keep the gold. In other words, it's the ability to run a trade surplus. Countries that have the ability to run a trade surplus, it doesn't matter whether they're exporting natural resources or whether they're exporting manufactured products, those countries that have the ability to export more than they import are going to be accumulating the gold. Uh, so now that puts China obviously in a very good position because they're going to end up with almost all the gold. They also have an incredible manufacturing base so I don't see any problems for China under that system. Now under this system, this new system in the grand finale that Saddle Tramp's talking about uh, he sees the United States being an exporter of natural resources and that uh, their portion of the currency would be backed by that uh, whereas China would be backed by gold other countries by different things so there would be a giant reset and uh, then they would do an evaluation now the main thing to take out of this is that if that happens that obviously is going to require an international body that's going to set up these rules and what he says is that for that to come about there's going to have to be a tremendous amount of pain first uh, so much pain that the people are going to be screaming for somebody to do something and that's going to mean that their retirement accounts the stock market the bond market uh, all the paper assets are going to decline dramatically and you can see here that we're at the exact opposite point where you have stocks like Priceline which is a company that doesn't produce anything they actually resell the services of others and buy very expensive commercials on TV with Captain Kirk uh, those are going to go down dramatically and uh, people are going to see their retirements uh, vaporized and uh, then they're going to cry out for the government to do something. Now what that means for you is there isn't much time left. I believe once you see the stock market start to seriously decline, and this clearly here with just this stock, but there are other stocks out there like it, this is a parabolic rise. It could have crashed here, but they ran it up again. So it's going to crash, and when it crashes, it's going to be dramatic because it's a parabolic rise it's going to result in a straight down decline for a significant portion of this rise now when that happens there's going to be a tremendous amount of pain and a lot of people are going to be screaming for the government to do something about it uh, they're going to wait until the screaming is loud enough and then they're going to try to roll out their new system so I put a lot of credibility in what this guy says a lot of what he says makes sense I think that maybe their plans 
what does that mean for silver and gold? Well, he says he believes that uh, they're going to, anything that's commodity based is going to be radically revalued uh, dramatically higher. Uh, so I think that under that scenario, gold and silver would do very, very well. But let's jump over to the picks that I found for today. And as you know, I've been following the Lunar series very closely. I checked them on Atmax, Provident, and Gainesville. It just so happens right now on Gainesville, they have, I think when I checked, there were about 500 of these 2014 half ounce uh, Year of the Horse. You can see it's the 13th best seller on Gainesville. And you can see if you buy 50 or more, you can get them for 1383 now that's a really really good price I don't know where the price of silver is going from here uh, the members are split between uh, another low and uh, the low has been in but I have bought a lot of half ounce Perth products over the years the lowest price I've ever paid for half ounce Perth products is about 1280 to 13 bucks so this is near the very very bottom uh, for half ounce Perth products. Now I already bought a roll of the horse when they first came out. I bought a roll of the one ounce and I got those for $35. You can see they've got the one ounce here. I checked that they only have about 300 or so. But they do have, if you buy a hundred or more, you can get them for 33 37 So I don't know how much lower they're going to go with the price on the horse series but and again that's the 26th best seller there. So I think this is a really good price. You guys might want to snap these up. I'm not in a position. I don't have any dry powder right now, but uh, you might want to snap these up. I don't think they're going to go much lower than this. And uh, Atmex is quite a bit higher, and Provident is even quite a bit higher than that. So back to the main story. Saddle Tramp argues in the grand finale series that we are going to see a controlled demolition of the world economies. I encourage you to watch all four of those videos. Uh, he's very intelligent, has a lot of information, and we definitely should think about what he's saying. If that's the case, and people have asked him what he recommends they should do, of course he disclaims that he's not an investment advisor, but he does state that uh, people should get at least six months of food and water and supplies, then they should get uh, two months of cash for expenses, two months of living expenses, and uh, then he recommends that they should get some type of farmland, and and then he recommends that they should buy gold and silver. So pretty much in the same camp about how to respond to it. The other thing he says is that people should definitely pay off any variable rate debt, and if possible if it's not possible to pay off the variable rate debt that they should try to convert that variable rate debt into fixed rate debt because he does see interest rates rising dramatically when the controlled demolition begins so it's quite a possibility that this this gentleman is correct uh, it's it's one view I hope not I hope that there the banksters are not able to uh, collapse the current system and relaunch under a new world-based system but then again uh, they've succeeded in most of their shenanigans in the past so it's quite possible they could succeed this time and we'll talk to you next time